in many from uh, uh, different aspects. And uh, today we are privileged to have uh, two speakers with us. Um, we have uh, Simon Donye, who is the chairman of uh, Illustrators Association of Kenya. He's also the managing director of uh, Zoli Creations which is an illustrating firm. He's going to tell us more about it. And uh, we were supposed to have um, uh, Degua Jackson of Design40. Unfortunately, um, he was not able to be with us today. Uh, so to replace him is um, uh, Charles Chetty. Charles Chetty is an interior designer with A plus interiors and also a member of uh, IDAC, which is the Interior Design uh, Association of Kenya. And uh, it's going to take us through uh, the pricing issue when it comes to interior designers. Um, feel welcome, all, uh, all the present members. Uh, this is the place to be. Feel free. Uh, engage with us through the chat. And um, I would, uh, for housekeeping purposes, I request um, uh, we give uh, humble time to the two presenters uh, with us. So by doing that, we, we are going to mute um, and uh, only allow the two people uh, speaking to, to, to address us. So um, all other members, please let us mute. Remember, you can follow us um, through uh, Facebook Live, uh, through the Nairobi International Design Conference page. We are there live on Facebook, so join us. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, put them uh, you can direct them through the chat. Uh, as we progress, uh, we are going to answer uh, each and every question that is being raised. And we also, after the two presenters are presented, we'll open the floor for uh, questions uh, directed to the two presenters or any other person uh, with us today. So feel much welcome. And um, with that, I'll, I'll um, give it to our first presenter, Simon Donye. Is going to introduce himself, uh, what he does, uh, how he does it, where is he located, and um, yeah, and uh, we, he'll take us through uh, the first uh, session of presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome, Simon. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Bwana uh, Mwea. Uh, I'm also delighted to be in this uh, big team. Uh, this is my first time actually to uh, be part of this team, or the, rather this meeting, and uh, I, I, I feel humbled. I feel humbled actually to have this opportunity to do uh, my presentation today. I, although I didn't know the scope uh, of the expectation, but I decided to put uh, together uh, some, you know, some ideas about pricing, design pricing. Um, as you have heard, my, name's, my name is Simon Donye. Um, I'm a trained illustrator by profession uh, from Kuburuburu Institute of Finance. And uh, having been in the market for quite some years, uh, actually since uh, 20, 2012, I have also developed a lot of interest in design. Uh, that is graphic design. So as we have said, you know, being an artist actually cuts across. You know, you cannot limit yourself to one thing. You, you actually engage yourself in several things uh, to earn a living. So um, I decided to, when I was requested to make a, my presentation uh, during the, this, today's meeting, I went ahead and put across some ideas uh, about the topic of discussion today, that is design pricing. And uh, as you can see from my first slide, uh, we are talking about uh, designing, pricing, and uh, strategy, uh, design pricing and strat some strategies that are used in it. So as, uh, what I have uh, identified is that price is one of the most important elements determining a professional market share and proper, uh, profitability. Meaning that if you're actually not able to do your pricing well, 
you might not be able to make it in the market. Uh, and uh, at the same time, you might not also be able to uh, make good profit of uh, what you're doing. So um, I put some, uh, some slides there uh, to just to uh, show a bit of uh, what you're talking about when it comes to designing, especially uh, layout uh, for books. If you, if you can uh, put the second slide. Yeah, so uh, just to give you an, uh, an idea of what I do as far as uh, graphic design is concerned, this, this part of my work, uh, which I've done, and uh, as you can see, you know, to get a good work, or rather to get a, a client who can actually, uh, you know, task you to do some work, then your work has to uh, stand out. So you have to prove yourself that you are actually a professional who can actually be reliable in the market. So the client will see your product and uh, he will actually be able to against you depending on what you what you produce so if you give uh, you know a good product then you are actually assured of uh, one good price and continuity in the in the in the in the in the, in the business so uh, this is some of the uh, jobs I've done in design uh, part of the two documents that I've designed and uh, I just put uh, the samples of the two covers and one, one page of the, the design, uh, the layout that I did um, uh, within the documents. Uh, we can proceed then that slide. Yes, so I, when you're talking of design, we have three major pricing decision problems that uh, most designers make. And uh, or other difficulties which they encounter when, they, when it comes to pricing. So I've identified the, the, the three uh, issues that face designers, and one of them is actually how to set prices, uh, being a first-time designer. That's one major challenge. And then uh, the second challenge is how to adopt products of a price, over time, and space to meet varying circumstances and opportunities. And then the third challenge will be how to initiate and respond to uh, competitive price changes. As you know, the market keeps on, uh, you know, uh, transitioning. So as you keep on doing what you do, you have to, to factor in that there are quite some, uh, you know, um, pairing circumstances and opportunities that will present themselves and also those opportunities will also change uh, depending on uh, timing. So you have to be prepared as a designer uh, now to meet those challenges. Let's move on. So we narrow down to setting of the price. That is, uh, you know, how you set your price as a designer. And uh, one thing is that Particularly, pricing is a problem uh, when one has to set uh, a price for the first time. One must decide where to position the product on quality and price. In setting the price of a product, one follows uh, the six steps, which now I've elaborated down there. The six steps, and the first step is uh, selecting the pricing objective. So as a designer, you'll ask you, uh, this, this, uh, you'll be tasked to, you know, identify which objectives you actually targeting. Uh, there are six major business objectives that one, one can pursue through its pricing. And one of the objectives uh, is about survival, uh, maximum current profit, maximum current revenue, uh, maximum sales growth, maximum market scheming or product quality leadership. Those are the, the number one objective that you set when you're doing pricing, when you want to do a pricing, especially when you are just a first time in the business. Uh, those are things now you have to, you know, identify and uh, see how you can actually uh, go about them. Number two, when you are setting your price, 
you also to determine the demand. As a designer, you should determine the demand schedule, which uh, shows uh, the probable, the probable quantity purchased per period at alternative price levels. The more inelastic demand, the higher uh, one can uh, set a price. So demand will also determine much on how you set your price. And uh, as, you, as we have said, the demand will also be determined by the quality of your work which you produce. So as a professional, I believe that uh, the, the quality of your work will uh, go a greater length to initiate the demand for your work. And uh, consequently, you naturally, uh, that will now help you to see how you can determine your price. If your demand is good, then suddenly it shows your work is good and your price should also be good. Slide three. Then the other, uh, or rather objective that you determine when you are setting uh, your price is about estimating costs. And you see, as designers, uh, as a professional designer, once to change, to change a price that covers all of its or a, a cost of producing, distributing, and selling the product, including a fair return for its effort and risk. Moreover, one should estimate how it costs at a different output levels and when different levels of accumulated pro uh, product experience. Yeah, and I think that's very clear that, you know, when we are setting price or we're estimating the cost, there are quite a number of factors which you consider as a designer, uh, how much you have invested in, the, in what you're doing. Uh, uh, the, the, the kind of materials that you're using to make your product and you know uh, among other you know other uh, uh, costs that will also be involved to uh, gain your costings so that's a factor to determine uh, the, the kind of costings that you encounter as you produce your as you do your product slide four And then the other factor that you consider is analyzing competitors' price and offers. And I will actually admit this is one of the major challenge, especially in third world countries, because we have all sorts of uh, you know uh, players in the market, and uh, at times even professionals tend to bend the rules because of the unfair competition that we encounter in the market. But as a professional, you will also examine competitor price as a basis for positioning uh, your product. And, uh, you know, this will also be your product or rather the quality of, pro of product still here will add the value, will add more value to how you can actually leverage yourself in the market because of the unfair competition that you're bound to encounter. And I think that's one of the reasons we, we're here as, a, as professionals to uh, get to discuss on how we can actually counter this particular problem. Slide five. So, um, as you can see, I've also, and I was requested <laughs> to share part of uh, my invoices of uh, what I do. And I decided to share three uh, samples of my invoices, um, just to give an overview of what or how I do pricing on my job. Uh, as I told you, I'm an illustrator by profession. 
and also I do uh, graphic also as a profession, but I'm mostly trained on the uh, on the illustration side. Um, so, as you can see, depending on uh, or rather the the rules that I apply for the game uh, when it comes to pricing, uh, one I will uh, first understand more of the client I'm dealing with because I sometimes I believe or rather it's my belief that a client can also determine how much you you can set your price at uh, depending maybe on your negotiation skill. So um, the first invoice is a job that I did in uh, 2017 and uh, as you can see at that time, I was uh, there was a cost for a grayscale illustration that I was charging at uh, 1,200 shillings, and uh, there was there was also a map, uh, a drawing or a vector map that I was also charging at the at a cost of 1,100 shillings having bargained with the client to that extent. That, is, that was 2017. And now jump to the current year. Uh, there's an invoice that I also did for a certain client there. And you, as you can see, uh, the illustrations here now, one illustration uh, still grayscale is being charged at 2,500, uh, 2,500 by illustration. Uh, and that cuts across all the, cuts across all the job that I did for that particular client. And uh, if you go down, I can, I will also demonstrate how tricky or rather how confusing this can be for maybe first timers when it comes to dealing with clients and they have asked you to give a quotation of your job, you, you are bound to face some difficulties that if you are not conversant with how you can get to charge your job, depending on the brief that you get from your, your, your plan. If you go to slide, slide three, or rather no, uh, sample three of my invoice, um, that's, that's a job that I did uh, this year. And as you can see, an illustration uh, was actually being charged at, uh, you know, that's $5, I think. Uh, translating to 5,000 uh, Kenya shillings for illustration. So these are three different, uh, different clients. Uh, but as you can see, the cost is faring actually, depending on, uh, uh, particularly the timing and also the client. So we can see over time, the price has changed. And also depending on the client, uh, there's also a difference in pricing. Because all the invoices here we are talking about, they actually grayscale. These, there's no, the illustrations on, on uh, you know, sample two and sample three, they are all grayscale. But sample one, the price is different from uh, sample two. Basically, uh, depending on the client and now you're bargained as a professional uh, illustrator. We can move on. So we got to number five and number five is about uh, selecting a pricing method. And basically is uh, is not different from what, what I've shared uh, uh, with uh, my sample presentation. But as a professional, uh, a professional will select one of the following pricing methods. Uh, that is a markup. Mm, part of my text is cropped. I can't see, but it's okay. Uh, then maybe I refer to my phone, just a moment.
Yes. Um, a professional will select uh, one of the following pricing methods, uh, depending on markup price, uh, as in markup pricing, target uh, return pricing, perceived value pricing, uh, going rate, sealed uh, pricing. So those are different types of uh, selecting how you're going to price. So you can actually choose either of these, uh, you know, types of pricing, uh, depending on uh, the kind of job that you're doing and uh, the target that you want to achieve as a, as a professional designer. Slide six. And then, The purpose of pricing, uh, that is uh, select price. The purpose of pricing uh, of previous pricing method uh, is to narrow the price range from which to select the final price. In selecting the final price, a professional must consider uh, the following factors. And these are the, the, the few factors that uh, I've identified, that is psychology, of prices, uh, the influence of other market mix elements on the price, e.g. Uh, brand quality and advertising relative to competition. And then uh, one's pricing policy and impact of the price on the parties such as com uh, competitive individuals and institution. So there's some uh, samples of my work I had shared. I don't know if uh, Mr. Muya, uh, you can share with, I don't know if this is what came through. There's a slide I'd shared um, to show us a bit of uh, the difference between, uh, yes. So this was just a case study I needed to present just to show about what I just explained about arriving at a price for uh, probably the work you're doing. Uh, all right, this, the number one is, is a factor map uh, that I've, 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 I've done personally um, for a certain client. And then number two is, is a, a grayscale illustration uh, that is kind of a story, story illustration. And then number three is just a color illustration, a single color illustration. So depending on uh, what the client needs, it will actually task you to do any of these uh, different uh, levels of illustration. And as you can see, uh, if you look at the picture map that I have done as number one, uh, it actually shows uh, some details, a lot of details in it, which actually require a designer to really concentrate and uh, spend much time before he results with the final product. So as a designer, you will actually be uh, required to kind of evaluate the amount of time that you will actually take to develop such a such piece of work and the amount of uh, details that are involved in the same work. And then that will also help you to determine how much uh, you can price your work. So you can also be given a brief which you require, you require to do a story-like illustration uh, where you, is, is the client terms it as a, just a single illustrations, but in it, quite a number of elements are involved or rather quite a number of details are involved. And uh, the same client will also require you to do a one single illustration, which probably might, he might want you to charge the same. So, as a professional, you must know what it takes to develop such a detailed illustration vis-a-vis -vis, uh, another illustration that uh, you, 
will not require much time to, to, to develop. So these are some of the factors that uh, you need to consider as a designer uh, uh, to know how you can actually arrive at your, your pricing. So in my case, um, I, always, I always consider the amount of complexity uh, involved in each illustration, the amount of time that uh, I have taken to develop uh, that particular illustration. And that actually determines how much uh, that illustration is going to fetch. And I will now make it clear with the client, um, try to really explain to the client uh, the reasons behind uh, the different chargings when it comes to illustrations. But at times you also have to be careful that you don't have quite, uh, you, know, you know, so many ranges of pricing because that can also end up scaring the clients away. Uh, because most clients, we, uh, as I've you know, realized over years, is that they want a set uh, kind of uh, pr uh, pricing that does not uh, keep on changing. So you have to determine maybe uh, categorize your, if it's your illustrations, probably is it a complex or a simple illustration? By so doing, you can actually set two, you can make two sets of pricing and that will make it simple for the client to really understand how you are trying to arrive at your pricing. So these this case study illustrations, I just put there to explain and to demonstrate how uh, a first timer designer or an illustrator can actually find it hard when he receives a brief from a client to come up with uh, pricing if he cannot or he, might, he doesn't know how to value uh, the brief and give a good pricing to the client. So thanks a lot. I think uh, I'll be welcome for questions and that was my bit of presentation. Uh, as I told you, this is my first time and I did not understand, or rather I didn't know the scope of expectations, but I believe uh, when the questions comes, uh, we will be able to delve more on the same. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. The Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Simon. Actually, it's your first time and you have really covered it very well, very well detailed. Uh, thank you very much. I never knew illustration is um, has some uh, this kind of arrangement in terms of costing, but I really, I really learned something. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll call in the next presenter, uh, Mr. Charles Chetty, who is sitting in for Jackson Degua. Mr. Charles, you can unmute. Hi, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I have listened to what uh, my brother, Mr. Ndone, has covered, and it's quite extensive, and uh, it really um, is not very far from my, what I want to share. It's quite related, really. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, DKS for an opportunity to share this. I would also like to give apologies of my former boss, Mr. Ndegwa, who uh, was going to cite in the afternoon and asked that I sit in and, and share. Actually, he told me that this morning. He requested, but a request, this is something for you guys to learn, that a request from, from your former boss is not a request, it's a command. Eh? <laughs> yeah, so really, uh, the respect, Eshima uh, Idum, I talk you quit job from say uh, they are still your they are still uh, your senior in a in a way. So Atakama Likwam by a boss is a boss always. Same to a lecturer. I, I'm not mentioning names. So <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely your senior is your senior all the time. So here uh, we have um so I went and dug a bit about how to charge for design services and Ms. Andonia highlighted a bit some of these ones. So this is like what we would experience. I come from the interior design uh, profession. I'm an interior designer. My firm is called A Plus Interiors Limited. Uh, I think for those of you who are here a few weeks ago, I was talking about the design process 
and as I was talking about the design process, I kept highlighting that you need to learn how to charge for your design and that you need to also like be paid for every stage if you are a design consultant. However, there are like three main uh, models of charging for design. Like um, three main ways that you can charge for design. And like this, there are so many variations of them, but at least these three stand out. So one way that you can charge for design is per hour. Um, you charge the design based on assessment of projection of hours that you think you will work on that project or you think your team will work on that project. So normally this is very subjective um, and very, um, I don't know, it's not a very popular way of charging for design, yet it's one of the ways of charging for design. When people say studio time, they're charging for studio time, then it means that they have started and asked themselves, how long is it gonna take for me to uh, do this job or for my team to do this job? How much I pay them at the end of the month? So then uh, you, work, you work the math of how much they are worth per hour. Also, you also need to work the math of how much you're worth per hour as, as a designer. This is, like, like I said, is not very popular, but it's a tool that you can have as a designer for jobs that, for the future, for jobs that you, sometimes you get stuck on, hey, Mangue, how am I going to charge this thing? And I've never even done this kind of thing before. You know, I've never even done this kind of project before, yet it's in the line of, of what I do, or, or I've never done this project in this kind of software. So this can bail you out at some point. Say, you know what, just took me two days, and then, Blah blah blah. Normally, I would be comfortable paying this amount of month in a whatever money is in a month. So you work backwards, then you get your per hour rate. Number two is is one of the most popular ways of charging for design, especially interior design. Those people who call themselves themselves uh, who do design and build. This is how they charge, and this is like the the style that my boss, uh, Mr. Ndegwa, has perfected materials, labor. Uh, I forgot to, in, to, in, to include transport materials, labor, transport, and a markup or a margin. So it's like you sit down and calculate everything that you will need. So this is for design and build. Now, this is not just for design. When you're designing and building, you calculate the value of the work from the materials you will need that is like materials on site, how you will transport these materials to site, the amount of money you will need, the labor, amount of labor you will need per job, and you charge a margin on it, and you also need to charge VOT on it. I, I forgot to include, I was preparing this quickly, quickly, because I was told just a few hours ago to put together something. So you, you need to add VAT on it. So for instance, let's say for instance, we're doing a gypsum partition, you have to think, where is my site? Like uh, just last night, I was working on a quote for a site that is in Meru. I have to see, Maze, kuna gypsum pale Meru. Do you have gypsum boards in Meru or not? Or do we have to transport them from here in Nairobi? How much am I going to buy them? Then loading them into the vehicle, then transporting them to Meru, offloading them, taking them to site, and then um, getting someone to board a matatu from here to Meru and go and do the work and how much they will charge per hour if they have to sleep, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then my margin, uh, a markup, sometimes might be 40%, 30%, 60%. A, a margin is actually 66% of now that. And then you apply 14% VAT or NIT, then you get the cost. So, the, so this is a very safe way of charging for work. You definitely make bomb. This is for a, a free tip. Yeah, what will be a shara? This is how to make money in this Nairobi. Now, the third way is a percentage. Now, you might get people who want you to just design and 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 maybe probably supervise. Like even this client asked me, uh, 
what then would you charge us if it was just design alone? Design, and then you come on site for like two trips to supervise the work, so three or four trips, whatever, how many trips uh, you would need. So first of all, for you to be able to know how to charge a percentage, which is now like a design phase, you first of all need to understand the totality of how of the job. You need to understand the number two. You can't charge number three if you don't understand number two. Because how are you then going to? You're going to base your cost on what? You know what I mean? You have to have at least the capacity to calculate everything that will go into this project. Or at least estimate professionally. You know, there are what we call a high level BOQ. It's a, it's a high level estimate. But which is almost as good as, a, as an actual estimate. So what, what happens is what happens is that for you to be able to charge a percentage, then it has to come from somewhere. So it comes from materials, labor, transport, markup. VAT is normally now on everything. Everything has to have VAT. Even per hour basis, you have to charge VAT. If you're running a company limited, you have to, to, to pay taxes. So normally interior designers charge 12% of the total cost of an interior fit out, okay? But this is negotiable. Honestly, um, in this Kenya of ours, you will get so many people wanting to pay uh, so many variations. So it's for you to say yes or no to their valuation of their work. But by law, we're supposed to charge 12%. Architect charge 6%. Now, in a job that has everybody, that has an architect, has an interior designer, has uh, civil mechanical engineer, um, uh, quantity surveyor, you don't have to worry about number two because the quantity surveyor is going to come up with a cost. Like there's this job we are doing, I'll be visiting the quantity surveyor on Friday. So he told me, you, you need to come. We, we know, we, we see what, it, what finishes you're putting on this job so that we can cost it. So after they cost it is when now, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm charging this kind of percentage. So my money is this after we know the total project, total project cost. So my money shall be this X amount. So the client, of course, at a Leah Kamakawaida, then blah, 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 blah. We come to a, we come to an agreement. So a percentage, as they say, arguably, is the most appropriate method of charging for design work, which sees the, uh, no, the most appropriate method for, ja for charging is which is the designer charging a design fees, which is the percentage or per hour. Like I said, that's not uh, popular. This means the client can see what is being paid for directly without fees being hidden. Number two has a lot of hidden costs, yeah? Because you're charging a margin on everything. I talk in Unua, when you're outside and you buy a broom, you do cleaning, you bought it at 600, you apply markup on it. You get what I mean? Yes. So <laughs> there's so many hidden costs. And uh, that's how to make money, bro, in this country. But it's not like the most appropriate because the client is not able to see what they're being charged. And that's how now we get, we end up having clients who bargain Yanni all the way because they think, Yanni, this guy is making a kill here. You get what I mean? Yeah. So every, every model of charging has its advantages and disadvantages um this also means that the payment is being made within a reasonable amount of time for the work being done and that the financial commitments on the client are kept to a minimum as charges for each stage of the project are agreed before work is undertaken so when you're being paid percentages you like i said on the like on, in my previous 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 presentation I said you break down the design fees into stages. So you're paid for every stage. So this, this makes sure that the client feels they are paying very little amounts. Said so we have five stages of the design process. You can break it further, even into 10. So if someone was to pay you X amount and you break it into six stages, they feel like they're paying very lightly, but, they, but at the end of the day, as they get drawings for this stage, they're paying and paying and paying, and paying until 
they realize what they paid is uh, yeah significant. So uh, lastly, the designer decides to charge. However, the designer decides to charge. Please let us just be open and transparent to our clients, uh, so that it benefits everybody. I read a few books, and these are the ones. Those are my references. I'll be sharing this with the team, uh, with, with the DKS team as well, so that you can go and also read the books and you know see what's there. Yep. So thank you very much, uh, Mike, and uh, yes, we'll be right for the invitation. And Simon, uh, that was a good presentation. Thanks, Chetty. I think we'll go through a few questions. Um, we had some questions that came in advance, even as um, members are on the floor, ask a few more. I'll start with you, Chetty, uh, because you touched on this when you were talking about the per hour rate. Eh? Yeah. How do you actually come, how do you calculate that number? Uh, I know in the room so far, I know we've got, we've got graphic, we've got fashion, we've got uh, interior. Those are the ones I've identified. How do you come to that calculation of it X per hour? Like I said, uh, sorry, uh, can I answer? Pardon? Yes, answer, please. Just read it. Can I yes. answer? Yes, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Oh, so, so like I said, um, thanks for that question. Um, um, like I said, this is not a very popular model of charging. However, yeah. how I approach it myself is, I look at everybody who's working on that job, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and if I'm working on it also plus myself, roughly how, my, how many hours they would mm -hmm. take to do it. Then you look at how much they are paid at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Then you now work your math backwards to knowing how how much how worth, how much is someone worth per hour? Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah, so let me just let me just do a calculation. Mm -hmm. Let me do a calculation so it makes sense to some people. So let's say you have a draftsman. Yeah. Because you, you do design and build yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So On let's say project. you have a guy who you pay twenty five thousand a month. Yes. He works twenty days a week. Yes. And uh, he works, uh, so that is uh, about 12, uh, 1,250 a day. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be a full hour day. So you would take that, like maybe divide by eight and get his per hour rate. That's just a rough estimate. Yeah, that's just a rough estimate. Exactly. So, if you, so you work it backwards like that and you say, so he's on his, he will work on this thing for X number of hours. Mm, yeah, so yeah, draftsman yeah. X. So that helps you build into your... Your, your total final, final figure, final and of figure. course now then you have to have you have to make a profit. Yes. Yeah. So you don't you don't uh -huh. now you don't now charge the exact amount that all of you then you wouldn't be in business. Okay. <laughs> just in, uh, it doesn't hand <laughs> to mouth there. <laughs> so then on that one you add like a markup. Yeah, you can even now do uh, two times of that, three times, mm. four times. Mm. Like Simon says, assess the clients, <laughs> assess your client, <laughs> and assess your competition. <laughs> and then yeah, position yeah, in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. let me ask, and I, I guess you can think about it also, Chetty, but Simon, when do you recommend, like you, you see, you, you presented three different prices over the years, right? And you know how much clients negotiate. Do you, do you recommend... Uh, what I have seen some people do is put in a very large markup so that they'll come and they'll tell you to be X on this project. And then when you start, you are, you put in a large markup to cater for client negotiation, complaining. How do you ensure that you make what you need to make to like, like Chetty says to meet cost and make something on top? Uh. Thank you. Thank you, Chesubire, for the question. I, okay, personally, what I normally do uh, is uh, I, I, I always set my target for pricing. Mm -hmm. And then I also, you know, um, back, you know, my, 
my boundary where I can't actually exit or rather go below. So when I'm, when I'm, uh, when I'm, or rather when I'm uh, kind of uh, deliberating with my client about the pricing, I always make sure that I operate within uh, those two uh, targets that I've actually put for myself. Mm. So, um, and, and you see now, as uh, my friend has said, uh, this, you have to rate yourself on how much you actually uh, make in a day, for example. Uh, mm. That's a principle of personal use. Eh? Like, uh, I know how much I can actually take with a certain or a specific task. Eh? So, mm. the price that I'm charging will, not actually, will actually exceed that time, and the client is not, not ready or willing to pay, mm. then I, I, will, I will reconsider. Uh, that particular okay. job. So uh, that's how I actually range myself. I know how much I, I do in a day, how much, for example, illustrations I can develop in a day, mm -hmm. and, uh, how low I can actually charge by illustrations. If the client can actually go between, uh, between those two, you know, uh, set margins, eh? mm -hmm. I, I will be comfortable to accommodate him. But he, if he goes below that, then uh, I, I will... Uh, I will opt not to take the project. So how do you gain the confidence to tell a client, no, thank you? <laughs> Either of you can take that question, that their pricing is below. How do you, is there a gentle way to break that knowledge that what you're offering is below expectation? Charles or Simon, any of you can take that. Okay, let, let, let me go. Uh, okay. You know, when you are you begin a project or a client calls you for a particular project, one, one of the things they like actually ask you is a quotation, right? Yes. They, they ask you to give a quotation. And uh, when you give your quotation, of course, you will uh, put your, your, your price uh, or, or, mm. or that's how you want to charge whatever you're doing, be it a design, be it an illustration. So, um, so when you're arguing about the pricing, I believe uh, that's where you start. The quotation you are giving, the, the, there's a limit. So you try to give the best you can in your quotation, eh? depending on the client that you are, you're dealing with. Uh. So don't quote uh, based on the law, uh, you know, the law setting that you have put for your your, 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 your markup. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you, you have go within that. So if the client is ready to take your prizes, uh, uh, what you have quoted on the, on the quotation, then you are good to go. If then he's not mm -hmm. ready to agree uh, with your quotation, then uh, w w what you normally do is, uh, most clients, what they normally tell you, we will get back to you. So in other words, they say, you can't be happy. That's, that's what I've faced in the market. They always say, we'll get back to you, and then they don't, they don't get back mm. to you. It means mm. they have your, your, your price. So in very few cases, you'll be actually tasked to, you know, put them or rather refuse the, 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 pro, the price or that kind of thing. That's, that's how I've faced it in the market. Okay. How about you, Charles? Thank you very much uh, for that question, Cesuvira. Um, I like what uh, Simon Donya brought on board. Uh, I would say for the different, for the three different models of um, charging that I presented, mm -hmm. if you're charging per hour, <laughs> my brother, you can only go so low. Of course, you can't go past the amount that someone is supposed, you have to make at least some money. Mm. If we are just breaking even, Unless it's during, during like when you have no other job. But the least, the least you can do is to break even. The least you can do. Like when it's corona times, eh? like it's really, really thick. Eh? The, the least you can do is to break even. Never take a job whereby you are going, you have to look at like what Simon Donya said, the least, the least is to break even. Mm -hmm. But for me, the least is not to break even. The list is at least to make 15% markup. Kama hakuna hiyo, wacha tu ikai. You get. Yes. The, mo the most is to make even 80%. No, 20% is the least for me, actually. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing like that, bro, <laughs> you're not my brother. 
nothing to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I think it's yeah. important because many of us don't understand uh, the the price floor because they a lot of clients go and say, but so and so will charge me less, and then we feel the. Um, the desperation to at least make something so we go below cost. And I like the idea both of you have presented of, I call it a price floor, the, 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 what you cannot go below. Because mm. you, like you said, either you have overheads to meet, so you have to be able yeah. to earn something. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I, thank you very much for bringing that. I, I think if they say so-and-so is charging, you just tell them, please go with so-and-so. Oh, I wish sorry. you all the best. Yeah, I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you very much for coming, <laughs> for giving me your time. You ni kazi mepoteza. Yeah, but pia ni shida ni mepoteza. Because if you take on board uh, a job that is going to give you trouble, or you're going mm. to do a feeling, um, uh, that key feeling of, mm. you know, you will not mm. even do the job well. Uh, Same on Donya can tell you. Mm. Uh, it will just be illustrating, and then you feel sleepy in the middle of it. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not making anything. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let me ask Bonamoya a question because you, you Mike, you you are able to cross cut across multiple disciplines. Yeah. What are the basic elements that should every discipline should consider? Remember, here we've got fashion design, we have interior, we have illustrators. That is who I've captured. What do you think as as are the basics that must be covered in every costing conversation. Uh, thank you, Che. Um, when we're in school, we were taught something. Uh, you know, this, these are the subjects that we ignore because they are common <laughs> units and everything. Yeah? Economics, costing, yes. business, entrepreneurship. But one thing that we were taught uh, is something uh, we call cost and controls. Mm -hmm which basically you look at your cost or pricing from um, what we call the industry uh, kind of approach where you have a factory cost, right? Here yeah. the um, uh, fac factory cost now will include what Charles is calling materials and everything else. Mm -hmm. Then in that factory, uh, you, you have um, materials which covers its own cost, right? When you're talking about materials, we have, um, if for example, you are a fashion designer. Thank you for picking the fashion. cost is not uh, the fabric length price, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That material, you have gone all the way to his sleeve. Mm -hmm. So there's transport. The one Charles, Charles was saying, there's transport to that material only, right? Yeah. There is, um, you, you have to search for it. Maybe it's not in shop A, it's in shop B, or you move from his Lee all the way to the carpet to get a certain material. Mm. So the, it has a, it's not only the fabric cost when you're buying. It's the fabric plus any other cost that is involved. Sometimes mm. you have to take a picture and send it to the client for approval. You're using airtime, right? Mm -hmm. So that material cost, it covers uh, so many things. So to me, we have factory cost, we have um, uh, the material cost, then we have labor. Labor includes the person who is uh, um, uh, changing the material into the product you want to be. And it also, the labor could also be, uh, for those who are doing interior, the labor could also be machine, right? If you go to some yeah. industry, they'll charge you for machine hours. You are cutting my timber for one hour. They'll charge you for one hour to use that machine, right? Mm. Uh, for fashion designers, graphic designers, illustrators, you're using a computer. The computer um, has electricity tied to it, right? The bundles, yeah. the, the tokens that you buy to put up uh, to wash the computer to do the work, yeah. right? Then uh, now we have the over costs. The overcost is now uh, what you're incurring. You have called fundi the whole day. Haonekani, apatikani. You're looking for another fundi. There's that overcost that usually comes uh, when you're doing a project. Now, then plus your profit, mm. then plus tax. I think that's, this, that usually cuts across uh, all, all, all disciplines 
And once you do those costs, that's when you get your selling price. Mm -hmm. From those who do business, I think that's, that's when you get your selling, selling price. price. Yeah. And Fantastic. Sometimes that selling price, you add a small margin to make your profit. Okay, you yeah. say small margin, Chetty says another big 66% margin. So, <laughs> so like, I figure you're going to, it's depending on, yes. on, on what? Yeah, uh, that small margin depends with, uh, actually depends with you. Mm. Like how much do you, do you want to make from that project? Okay. You know, uh, mm -hmm. to, to me, maybe uh, a good margin will be 10,000. To Charles, he, he wants a, tes a Tesla, so he'll charge 1 million extra. <laughs> so it depends, it depends with your person. Then uh, you, you must have some business skills. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, somebody was telling us, even for interior designers or graphic designers, evaluate your client. If it's a matter hospital has come to me for a job, I will go to the, I'll go search them. I'll go to their website, look at what they do, look at the quality of work they produce and uh, gauge from that, how much can I charge them? Just mm -hmm. the same way you go to Gikomba. If you have won a, a, an official shirt from the shop, they'll charge you extra. But just the evaluation of you. <laughs> just by <my> looking. <laughs> so there is a business angle you have to look at. Okay. I'm Janja Kiasi. Janja Kiasi, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, thanks. That's a good perspective. So there's a question from Nyanchama for Chetty, and I think it cuts across the board. Eh? Uh, and remember, we, we kept talking about professional designers, but he, he says, how can I value, know my value if I'm doing projects, but I haven't gone to university? And I, I'd, I'd actually like to throw this question to all three of you, because we have a growing tribe of self-taught designers, right? And uh, some of the things Mike is talking about are taught in class, but uh, others don't have that perspective. So how does one know their value when they're doing projects? Because pricing is value-based. Chetty, you can start and then we can go to Simon and then Mike can finish. Thank you for that question, uh, Nyanchama. How to know your value? I would advise that it's very hard to know your value when you're starting out. Because, okay, fine, some people do, but a big percentage wait for the market to value them. Okay? Instead of knowing your own value, you wait for the market to tell you what how valuable you are the problem with waiting for the market to tell you how valuable is that is they will always value you they will always undervalue you okay that is now the clients and the customers depending on on on, on what you're doing i think if you're fresh 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 you should start from my point number two my model number two of charging which is Calculate and what more I have said. Calculate all the materials, all the costs that transport, blah blah blah, that goes into that, uh, into doing what you're doing. If it's fashion, I don't know. You need to double it so that your value is double the materials. If it's interiors, because our projects are run into millions of shillings. Look at a margin that you're comfortable with. Ukifanya project ya meter, na uoni 200 iko tu sawa na wewe, which is 20%. Why not? You get what I mean? If you're doing fashion and you can see, you know, X amount, and if I make, uh, if on top of this, I'm comfortable with, like I said, I think that's very subjective. Your value is very subjective. But I think that the, the best approach to know it is how much, what is the scope of work that I'm going to handle? How much is the client going to pay for it? Because I, I'm against the clients who are really, really want to pay a lot for materials, that they're going to pay you as little as possible as your professional fees. Someone wants to buy a jacuzzi, 
for their house and those things, very expensive things. But when you start talking about your design fees, I'll talk about 20,000. Eh? Kenya shillings <laughs> only, uh, brother. Just run away. <laughs> run away. So look at the, the project value, add a margin on it. Mm. That you feel this is substantial. Let's start at that. Then when you do many projects in that type, then you might as well now then start knowing your value. Because I also think uh, many of us are underpaid, are undervalue ourselves, or the market undervalued us, blah, 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 and that way. But anyway, all these are factors that you're juggling on uh, on the same uh, scale. You're weighing them every single moment, morning. And I, I, I like what Simon said. Also, the market, don't, don't ignore what the market says, because mm -hmm. it also means that the people we are servicing, their purchase power is on this level. You understand? Mm. Again, let us not overvalue yes. ourselves for a certain market. There's this purchasing power, there's economics of scale, there's, there's a lot that, that you know, happens in our economy and spending power and you know, the target markets. There are so many other things mm -hmm. that inform uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of value. So, so for a certain market, I'm very expensive. For a certain market, I'm very affordable for a certain market. Tishikik. And that's that's how it is, brother. Yeah. Nice, nice. Simon, any chime ins? Uh, you can unmute yourself. Simon, unmute. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh I was interrupted a bit. So I think Chetty has really done uh, quite some elaboration there. So I don't know what to add, but I think what you said is true. Uh, how to determine your, uh, your value uh, or your worthy uh, in the market uh, will actually be determined by those factors. Uh, one is the, the market that you're operating in, uh, the market that you're operating in, and also, you know, you, your competitors, they will also determine uh, a lot about your worthy because you know when client is actually uh, when clients uh, wants to kind of uh, inquire about pricing, he will not do that uh, from a particular source, or rather one source. He will actually want to uh, do it from different sources. Eh? So he will consider quite a number of uh, service providers who will give different. Uh, Quotes, and that will actually guide him how he's going to, uh, who is going to give the job. So these are the factors. So the other things about uh, what will determine the worthy, your worth is also your your product, because uh, depending on uh, depending on what you're producing, uh, will give you a higher edge over the rest. Because uh, probably the client knows your work. He knows what you do. He knows uh, the quality of your work. He knows the, the capability uh, to deliver within uh, short timelines. Because there are, the, there are people who will be given a job and they'll take ages to deliver. So you can imagine uh, that will also be, you know, will actually work against them when it comes to costing. Eh? So th those are the factors I think will, which will determine uh, how you can actually price your work. If I can give you a work that you can deliver in one day and uh, another person will actually deliver in uh, four days. I will actually, uh, you know, uh, want to have you do the work vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other person because as a company, you will actually cut so much cost from my side if you can deliver this job within a short timelines and also the same quality. So I will be willing to pay you more because you have saved me quite some time, depending on a person who would have taken four days. So that will also work, uh, you know, for you, if you can actually deliver good quality work within a short timeline. So those are the factors you consider. How do I produce my work? Am I a slow worker or am I a fast worker? Do I produce quality work or um, do I just give a work for the sake of getting money? 
So those are the factors that will determine how much you can actually charge for yourself. So the moment you realize this is what I can do as a professional, I am able to deliver fast. I am able to deliver good quality work. I'm able to satisfy my client. Whenever I present my work, all, all the time the client gives me a thumbs up. You know, that is a sign that you need to up your price because they are liking the, your produce, they are liking your product. So it's a time to reconsider your pricing. And that may, makes, you know, helps you to gauge your worth in the market. Thank you. Good stuff. Mike, anything to add or can I pick on somebody from the audience to answer yeah, that I, question? What I'll just add, I think um, uh, Simon has covered what I wanted to say about quality. Quality design is equal to good price. If you, are, if you have a very high quality piece of work, then your price will always be, you'll have an easy time getting a good price for your work. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think uh, Simon has mentioned uh, just a bit is the, the client will also um, range you. Like the client will, will will actually range how much they can pay you by your portfolio. Portfolio is very important, right? Uh, for example, when it comes to interior, uh, if a client approaches you and they see your portfolio, um, your portfolio work, you have done uh, several above one million, right? Mm -hmm. If their project is two million, they'll give you. But if your portfolio shows you have done uh, work of mostly not uh, more than 200,000. Then if they value their project to 1 million, then they'll not give you. So your portfolio is very important. And I think this, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is what I'm giving, that, that's what I'm giving for interior design. Portfolio really matters. And your, mm. your portfolio is what you defend your value. Mm. Just for the example I've illustrated. And uh, um, I remember chatting with Emmanuel on uh, why Safaricom, they don't have inside design guys, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, for their graphics and, uh, you know, and they have a very consistent kind of service from a, yeah. uh, from a, from a design firm, okay? That yeah. means um, if anybody, whichever Kenyan you are, you go to that design firm, they will show you Safaricom portfolio. Yeah. So you know that. So that portfolio is actually what will set you uh, in terms of um, your value, and it's very important. And I always tell my students, those who are starting, uh, a, a portfolio in my initial, you you graduate first and start building up your portfolio. You start early <laughs> because now after after graduation, they expect you to have three years of experience in the job market. So that means when you're in first year, you should have done your first job. Mm. If you're a classic yes. designer, a simple poster, and you build from that. And uh, mm. if you produce good work, I'm telling you, you, you know, you, you con if, if you continue with the trend of producing good work, your portfolio will build up. I can mm. give you an example of Simon here. He has shown us 2017 and how much he was charging. The same artwork in 2020 is a very high figure. Mm. Right, and yes. uh, from 2017 to 2020, in his presentation, you could see uh, you you can actually see the trends that he was picking mm. and the quality that he was delivering. So portfolio is very important in terms of your value. Fantastic. Let me ask a member of the audience, completely unexpected, Wanjiko Wanderi. You began as a young graphic designer, and you have built all the way into an established business. Do you have any tips you can share? Chime in on the conversation. Hi, everyone. My name is Wanjiko, and um, I'm the founder of Shikes Creative Designs. We've been designing for the last uh, 15 years officially, but 20 uh, since I started when I was in college. And I was in uh, university. I used to do work to build my portfolio, as our friend was saying. Yeah, and um, it's true, you, that experience that is asked for, you should start working on it while you're still in school. And it will also teach you a lot of things that will guide your costing, 
principles even as you start your work and as you start work and business and all my biggest challenge has been in having people appreciate the value of design and the fact that we're not just skilled in um you know like computer skills or or anything like that there's there's also a creativity that is inherently born within us that helps us to see beyond what the normal person will see. So sometimes the challenge is helping somebody see the value in that. And also, you know, when you, when you know your value and you're able to value yourself and people don't see the value, it can be difficult, but again, the portfolio that you build over the years will help you be able to prove your case. Fantastic. I like that one. Thanks, Chico. You're welcome. Can, can I add something? Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah, because the person who asked the question was asking from a point of um, not having to go to a formal training. Mm -hmm. I would say then it, it's also good to be in touch with the people who are in the industry that you're in. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid. Like now, thank you for being in this forum or whoever you are asking for, if you are asking for a friend, is to ask them to <laughs> be in a forum, forum like this one and then feel free to ask questions. To, to like now, I like Wanjiku Wanderi and how she was in, introduced, established design firm. How what we are going to establish? Waongeleshe. I thought Chance idea. Chet is established. <laughs> Don't hide. Don't hide, Chet. Even Donya is established. <laughs> May I add something? Thanks, no. Chetty, for that. Yeah? The word established is relative here. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Um, the reason is, of course, COVID has hit us, and um, the market dynamics have also been very interesting. Like I said, I've been uh, in business for almost 20 years, but 15 officially, you know, when I registered the business and all. And, you know, this past month, we had to close our office. Yes. Yeah, and that's just how it is. So there are challenges that we're facing and we've been forced to rethink a number of things. So when we talk about the portfolios, I actually took away um, huge, huge boxes of samples of work that we've done. And that's what has built our name over the years. For the person who asked about not having training, um, the truth of the matter is that training you have sometimes ends up being a piece of paper. Let me give you a reason. I studied fine art in KU. I got my degree, and then we got out of uh, KU. Shock on us, we were not market ready. So everything that I have done, that I do today, has been self-taught. All the computer skills I have are self-taught. Anything I know about the printing industry was, you know, going down to Kirenyaga Road and sitting with those guys, making friends with them, having those guys on, on your speed dial. And you learn from them. You learn how, okay, those were the days of um, sep color separations and CG films being made. I don't know whether anyone here will get that. <laughs> you know, it was crazy, man. And mm -hmm. you, you learn how to literally go downtown to those shimos and buy paper in large sheets, have a guy of Mkokoteni carry the paper to a guy who cuts for you. And then you take it to the printer, you know, stuff like that. So we've learned on the job. So having the paper or not having the paper, really, you can make it. So long as you're determined and you have something in you that makes you see beyond the normal person. You know that creativity that God gave us? That is what, I think that's what has brought us here together. If we were all good in marketing and uh, sales, I don't think we'd be here. The reason we're here is because we're, we're designers. We have that creativity that God has given us. Like in me, Bado Tukonashida. Pricing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask one last question, then I will pass it to Buana Chair. Thank you so much, Chico. You're welcome. Um, there's a question from Naftali. Naftali is uh, in the, he's, let, me read, let me get your credentials right. He's from the Association of Animation Artists of Kenya, and he's currently the vice chair. And he's saying, we have some discussions in our field with regards to pricing of artistic work uh, or giving art and creative and related fields 
And the, the question that is left is, uh, should the different forms of creatives have a rate card that can go, uh, like, you know, like when you go to a baker, they give you a rate card, chocolate fudge, X, uh, blueberry, Y, is, is that a good pricing model to go with? Or should it go project by project? Uh, Chet is shaking his head, so I'll allow you to take the first jibe at this one. <laughs> Sorry, you're saying you'll allow me to go to, yes. to, to, to answer. Yes. Hey, red card brother. <laughs> I've seen that with the uh, It's because the cake yani washajua ni one kg. Yani fudge washajua is materials. So like mm. the job I do, there's no one shoe, one shoe size fits all. Mm. And also for the market we service. Uh, like I said, uh, you don't want to be caught flat-footed that this is someone from upmarket, and then you charge them a nini fee. You get what I mean? Like you mm. charge them. Uh, they will even not give you the job. Mm. They'll say, hey, man, they're pana. I can't work with a designer who charges like that. But mm. What time they can charge? You know, we have, mm. we serve middle class, upper middle class, uh, and even high play, whatever, where they're called what? The people who, who run the world, really. The top level. The top level, all the way down to the bottom level. Yes. So, for our, at least speaking from an interior designer's point of view, I can never try to have a uh, rate card. I heard about it, but I had about it with a DJ. So, I only mm. took out. Uh, oh, and there's a corner rate card because a wedding is a wedding. But for us, a lot of things uh, come into play. Uh, there's what we call high-end, fin what we call standard finishes, mm -hmm. high-end finishes, mid-range finishes, and super high-end finishes. And you know, you can't fit everybody in one in one place. Mm. Thanks. Okay. Bonandolia, do you have anything to add? Uh, uh, what uh, Chet has said actually is very true. It's very true. Uh, we have all the levels of professionalism out there, and uh, each 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 product will actually be rated differently, depending on uh, how it will come out. So this is something uh, as illustrators we have tried, and uh, we we actually came to realize uh, it could not work. It could not work. We have uh, illustrators association of Kenya, and uh, we thought we could actually control the pricing. Uh, system in the market. Uh, mm -hmm. We did our best. We we approached uh, different uh, consultants uh, who could help us achieve this. But uh, finally, we were told it's not even legal. You can't do that in Kenya. It's not backed by the law. So every client has his own. Uh, he can actually decide to reject or accept your price depending on uh, how you present yourself. So. Um, now, what is left is uh, to see what avenues are there. Probably speaking from, uh, from the point of an illustrator, it seems uh, what avenues are there in the market that we can actually uh, kind of legislate in the, in the, in the, within our law is to help probably the, the, the artists gain from the work that they do. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, issues of royalties, uh, issues of royalties, issues of, uh, you know, uh, reproduction. Uh, when you reproduce someone's work, uh, are, they, uh, are they something we can actually, you know, entrench within the law to protect that right uh, so that mm -hmm. someone can actually be paid when a client reproduces his work. So those are some of the benefits which are being organized as a, uh, as a group, you can actually push and entrench it in, this, in the Kenyan law so that uh, some rights are protected. And uh, we are now left with the, uh, now the law again of uh, our pricing depending on the quality of our work. Thank you. Fantastic. I think we've had a very robust discussion. Uh, I don't think this conversation can ever end my very humble opinion because we will always be harnessing it but thank you for coming and participating i will hand it to bwana chair
Malaki, are you still on? Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to take uh, this opportunity to thank all of you who took their time to be part of this particular noble discussion. And of utmost um, gratefulness is to our speakers, or rather for our speakers, K Charles Ketty and, um, and Simon, for that particular presentation you did. I've been following in silence, so they joined in late. Actually, I'm on the road, but actually had to join in for the purposes of this uh, discussion on cost. And to the members, uh, a lot has been said in as far as uh, design costing is concerned. Based on the two experienced designers who you have, would you want to bring the designer that are um, basically um, guessing what they are doing, but those ones who have already been in the market, they've tested both, uh, both seasons, low and high seasons. They've tested um, both clients, low clients and high-end clients. And that's uh, why we thought it's important to have them to come and help us uh, interrogate this particular discussion. So thank you, Charles and Simon, for that uh, comprehensive uh, presentation you've made. And I've um, been actually following the same. Um, moving forward, um, um, before then, uh, just one contribution. Uh, I know a number of things have been mentioned as far as the design costing is concerned. My contribution towards either to that is that um, you might be having a very, very nice portfolio, but how do you present it to your clients? Presentation, because you see a portfolio, I can be able to bring something from the internet, put it there, say I did this, but now there's the element of the defending your portfolio. How do you express your concept to the, to the client so that the client can be able to buy in? So there's that element of confidence, how you present yourself to the client. And based on that particular confidence, the client can be able to tell whether he's going to pay you the amount of money you're asking for or not. So that element of preparing the portfolio and defending that particular portfolio goes a long way to, the, 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 to, to help you. So presentation matters, both physically and uh, because the physical presentation, now you present yourself, it will also give, uh, give you confidence on how you are going to bring it out, even to the client. When you're telling the client, my charges is uh, 200,000 or 1 million, it depends on whatever you're putting on the table. So in as much as costing is concerned, there are various dynamics to look at, which you've been told by our, uh, by our, by our uh, speakers, uh, Charles and Simon. And um, I thought it was necessary also to add on that particular comment. Um, moving forward, we intend to have these discussions each and every after three weeks. And if you feel that these are discussions that um, we can be able now to continue with, because a lot can be said about design costing. If you feel that this discussion, we can be able to continue with it, let's continue, let's uh, have those particular discussion on the side charts so that we can be able to tell whether to continue discussion or move on to another topical issues. Because in design, there are a number of things that needs to be discussed. So thank you so much uh, to all of you who took this time to attend this particular session. I hope the session has been very informative and the discussion doesn't end there. The discussion on costing can be able now to move on. You can be able now to contact Simon uh, on your own, uh, Simon Donya on your own. You can be able to contact Charles on your own. You can be able to contact some of the senior designers, especially those who are starting. Even as we are reading the market there, we also sharpen each other. I own sharpen each other. So let's build our industry by doing whatever we need to do professionally. Let's not be Juwakali, because if you present yourself Juwakali way, it means not be able to grow. So let's learn from each other so that you can be able now to have design conversations being um, professional moving forward. Um, apart from that, um, thank you, uh, Kiesevere and uh, Mike for standing in, and that was a good conversation. And let's hope that um, in three weeks time, we can be able now to, to meet again and also have another discussion on and as far as the design matters are concerned. Asante Nisana and God bless. Uh, thanks, thanks Malaki. Like he said, we appreciate your time and we hope that you will keep uh, just watching the feeds. You can reach, us, reach out to us. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We're on email, we're on WhatsApp. If you would like to join the, we have, an, we have a WhatsApp group for Design Care Society, just send us a message on any of our platforms and we'll definitely, definitely reach out for you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Charles. You're always available when we call up on you.
you always have insight that is really useful. Thank you, Simon. This is now a new relationship we have built. Please watch your inbox. We're coming in again. And we ask that you'll have a fantastic evening and let's keep the design conversation going. Good night and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Slim. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Dim DKS, was it okay, Appa? Asanti. DJ Albert. Che, I got bored in the office, so I did this. Where? Here presentation in Noma. <laughs> I'm like, why do I bug myself with presentations? Mike can just be doing these things. <laughs> like for real? This is I an act of bored. boredom. I got bored in the office. <laughs> if this is an act of boredom, what the heck would an act of creativity be? Gotcha, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Archives. Hey, check your suit. What is your suit in an handkerchief? That was a nice presentation. You see, this one tries to keep guys focused. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Nani, uh, Donya had a very good presentation. Mm -hmm. Please ask him to share it with us. I have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Now, these, these are the kind of things that needs to go on our website. <laughs> we, are our website. Eh? we are working on that. Wow, that's good. That's good, Mike. I like that. But now, Nikama, we need a newsletter. In 2017, yeah, NIDEC. 2011, 2017. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was a, international. That very, a very good comparison. It does really come out well. I mean, you know, you really. Ajiona. Nice.